Hi, this is an instructional video on how to swap out your auto slide motor. Before we start, if you've already installed your unit to your door, you'll have to remove your unit so that you may have access to the screws that hold on to the motor. After removing your unit from the door, you'll then have to remove the casing of your auto slide, and that can be done by just get, grabbing the auto slide, holding it like this, putting one hand on the uh, metal framing that holds the unit together and one hand on the casing. It's either in white or black, that depends on what color you've ordered your outside. So you just pull it apart, put the casing aside so that you may have a better workspace, and so here's the inside of your auto side. This is the auto side motherboard case, this is the auto side motor, and so to remove the motor we actually have to remove the motherboard casing and the reason for that is because there is a cable that runs power and data to your motor and that cable is fixed inside of a groove that is underneath your motherboard case so in order to get that cable out and swap out your motor properly you'll have to remove the motherboard case so um, using an allen wrench the one we either provide with the kits that come with your auto side or if you just have an allen wrench laying around the house somewhere, uh, you simply find the allen wrench screws that are located on the left and right side of your case. So there's two here and then two here. You simply just need to unscrew them and the case should come off easily. So I've already unscrewed a few to save some time. So here's the case. I'm going to set it aside for now and we'll get back to it once we reach the next step. So once you take off your motherboard case and motherboard, um, you'll notice two metal uh, silver pieces that actually slide if I see. Uh, they both slide, they're right here, and between that is a metal groove. That groove, if, it, if your cable hasn't popped out, is where you keep your cables for um, the motor. Uh, so here's your cable. And now we're going to get to the part where we are taking off the motor from the unit. So we're going to get the unit, flip it upside down, and over here you'll find the screws that hold the motor. So there's four, and you'll need to unscrew them all in order to get the motor off. So I'm going to grab a drill and start unscrewing them one by one. So before I continue, I just want to show you the screw that we use for your motor. So, so that's just to not get your, the other screws in the kit confused. This is the screw for the motor. It's got a flat end and it's also got a flat tip. Uh, please make sure these are the correct screws. And do not lose them. Uh, they are very important and if you're missing one screw, um, the motor won't be as uh, firmly fixed to your uh, unit as you'd like. So here's your empty frame for your auto side. And now, I'm going to pretend, here's our old one, I'm going to pretend I have a new motor that I want to swap out. Let's pretend this is the new motor that we're installing onto our auto side. So we're pretty much um, repeating the process that I just went through, only in reverse. So, uh, oh, and before I continue, this is very important. These metal grooves, or pegs, that you see on the bottom of the motor, these are very useful. They help you out with... Um, aligning your motor properly so that the screws, the screw fixings on the bottom will be a lot easier to install or uh, screw back in. So I'm going to get the motor, stick it back onto the unit, hold it down, and then flip it back. And from here you look down the holes where the screws fit to hold the unit or the motor to the unit itself. I'm just going to align the screw holes and screw the screws back in to hold the motor. So here's one. And uh, please note, when you're screwing these screws back in, do be careful when screwing them back in because uh, the last thing you want is these screw heads to get stripped. So the reason I say uh, to be careful with the screws is because when a screw is stripped it becomes extremely difficult to remove the screw again so um, if you're not careful you'll have a very difficult time removing your motor because um, whatever drill or um, 
screwdriver you're using will have a difficult time grabbing onto the screw and making it loose. So please do um, keep an eye out for uh, stripping your screws. Okay. So now that we've installed our motor, uh, we are going to grab the cable that comes with it. This is the cable that gives power and data to it. Uh, we are going to then place it in the metal groove that I spoke about earlier. And just to remind you, between these two silver pieces, there's a metal groove. That is where you put your cables. So, now that you have your cables in the metal groove, we are going to put the motherboard casing back onto the unit. So, here's our motherboard casing from earlier. We first grab anything really and slide the metal silver metal pieces that I showed you earlier back into place so that you can simply screw your motherboard case back in okay now they are back over here so we are now going to get our motherboard case align the screws with the holes on the silver pieces and start tightening them in uh, Please note though, whenever I do this, I don't tighten the screws all the way at first because uh, the later part that I'll show you, pretty much what it is is um, when you're putting the case back on, uh, sometimes the buttons, this portion, is slightly out of line with the case so you want to leave this a little loose so you can adjust it and make sure the buttons are in the proper location. So I'm going to screw it, unscrew it lightly. Okay, and now what I'm going to do before I continue is get the cables that I unplugged earlier and plug them back in. That's one. That's two. And then here's your locking wires. Uh, units that do not have locking capabilities will not have these. So if you don't have it and your unit is not a locking unit, don't worry about it. There we go, and that's how your cables are. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if the casing is fitting properly with the motherboard. So, I'm going to stick the case back on. Uh, please notice the metal groove that goes along the unit. This portion is going to be placed on these plas white plastic pegs, like what you see here and here. That's pretty much how the case stays onto the unit. So I'm going to start off with the metal groove here, stick them onto the pegs, and then when you, oh, and do notice, see the gap here? Right here. This gap, this means that your motherboard uh, case is slightly out of um, position, so since we left the motherboard case slightly loose, we can actually adjust it into place. So I just get my finger stick it inside past the um, fabric covering and just push the motherboard. You'll actually feel it. Um, so you just need to push it aside once it's in the correct position. So now that it's in the correct position, all you do is stick the case back on. So the top grooves here are back. Now just click it into place. And there we go. That's how you swap out your auto side motor.